When you hear the word Jesus Christ, do you think of something on the outside that lived in time and space, as unnumbered tens of millions do? Then that's not he. You haven't found him. When you find him, you think of no one, that presence within you that brings everything into being in your world. He has always brought it, he's bringing it, and he always will bring it. And there is no other Christ. So when you hear the word, automatically check yourself. What do you think of when you hear the word Jesus Christ? If you make any mental image of another other than yourself, you have a false image. Do not believe. So if anyone should ever come to you saying, look, here is Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe him. But in spite of that, unnumbered crowds who believe themselves good students of the Bible will jack you up on it and think that you're arrogant. And any claim on your part, but make no claim, is simply blasphemy. Yet there will never be another Christ in your life. So I can introduce you tonight to him, as Peter was introduced by Andrew. Andrew found him first. Andrew discovered what he did to discover the creative power within him, who knows it's not recorded. What Philip did to discover it and to bring Nathaniel to it, it's not recorded. But it is told in story form, and man in a strange way has misunderstood the story. I now call he calls the grand parable history. It isn't history, it's divine history where this thing really comes into being in us. As he comes in us, be tested. Come test yourself and see. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in thee? Unless, of course, you fail to meet the test. For well, these three met the test. Unnumbered hundreds across the country are meeting the test. They may go back through habit and find, well, maybe some other comfort or some greater comfort in the believing of another. But I ask you to find him this night, trust him this night, and take any problem in your world and exercise the Christ in you before you taste of the power of the age to come. And see if he doesn't bring that thing into your world. For by him all things are made. Without him there is nothing made that was made. Nor will there anything be made tomorrow by any other power. The only power in the world is Christ. In him is life, and that life is the light of men. And you will one day have the experience of shutting it off and watching people stand still. And if you remember tonight's message, you will know that they are saying within themselves, I am nothing, absolutely nothing. As they have become aware of what was animated and it is still, it is nothing. And then you will turn it on again, and all will move as they intended before you closed it off. And that's the whole vast world in which we live. So when I say this is an animated wheel, we will understand the eighth of Romans. We were made subject unto futility, not willingly, but by the reason of the will of him who subjected us in hope. That the creature will be made free or set free from this bondage to corruption and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. When that something is set free in man, he joins the heavenly host and he is one with it. And tomorrow you and I will act, be controlling and animating this wheel. It goes on forever until that moment in time when one is ripe to be awakened and be detached from it. Another moment, another one detached from it. And we are the ones who will be doing it. Before we are actually detached from it, we taste of this power of the age to come. So here, if you were not with us when I told my vision, what a noise here tonight, isn't it? They may disapprove. They don't want me to bring you Christ this night, but I have found him. And having found him, I am bringing him, whether they approve or disapprove. So, many, many months ago, I had this experience to confirm the 41st chapter of the book of Genesis. For in the book of Genesis, we are told that if a dream doubles itself, but then the thing has been fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. 
And this is what happened to me. Again, I felt myself move in the spirit and move back in time. Not that far back, 200 years, but only say to the turn of the century. And I found myself in this interior of a palatial home that used to dot the fabric at the turn of the century. These 60, 70, 80 room mansions. As I entered, there were three generations present. One invisible, but he dominated the entire household. The two generations that were visible were discussing this invisible one who they referred to as grandfather. Well, grandfather had this system. He would stand on an empty lot. And while standing on an empty lot, he would say, and paint the most wonderful word picture as he said it, I remember when this was an empty lot. And then he would paint the most fantastic word picture of his desire for that lot. And paint it so vividly that they all saw what he saw and produced in words. It was that concept of life that made a fortune for him. It was that fortune that the two generations were now enjoying. But they didn't know his secret, they only told it as a story. Well, I came back, the whole thing was so vividly impressed upon my mind that I wrote it out. Having written the whole thing out, I returned to bed to redream the entire dream, with one exception. In the second dream, as I entered the mansion, seeing the same people, I was grandfather. And I turned to the two generations present, and I would tell them, I remember when this was an empty lot. And then I painted the word picture of my desire for that lot. So I told that story to the audience in LA. I tell it no matter where I go. For it means it is a true vision when the thing is doubled, as told in the 41st of Genesis. So on the strength of that, many now are taking that system as it were, by saying to someone or saying of someone, I remember when they were unemployed. If today they are unemployed, within their mind's eye, they say, I remember when he was unemployed. If I remember when he was, I am implying he is not now. I remember when he didn't make 10,000 a year. If I say, I remember when he didn't make 10,000 a year, I am implying he makes in excess of 10,000 now. If I want to push it up, I can say, I remember when he did not make 20,000 a year. That would imply his income is in excess of 20,000 a year. I remember when he was just a weekly. I am implying he is not a weekly any longer. So you can take this technique and apply it to anything in the world. I remember when she was madly in love with one that I disapproved of. I remember when I couldn't even raise the question because she would not listen to me. And her father and I disapproved completely, but after all it was her love affair. And so, what could I do about it? But I remember when that was a problem. Therefore it's no longer a problem. You can take this same attitude towards every problem in the world and bring about the solution. I remember when he had, and you named it, if I remember when he no longer has it. And you can do this with everything in the world. Now this is something that I did not induce. Visions are things you do not sit down and induce at will. No power in the world can sit and induce a vision. A vision to me is truth unmodified by the conceptual mind. You don't rationalize it. You don't sit down and think about it. It just happens. And we are told in the book of Numbers, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in vision, and I will speak with him in a dream. For the Lord is not a liar. So if he speaks with you in a dream, well then listen carefully. And when the Lord repeats the dream, it's for a great purpose. He tells you that is now fixed and go out and tell it. Tell it as though you have received it and everyone heard it as you received it. For the thing is now fixed by God and God will shortly bring it to bear. But since I started telling that, I can tell you the most wonderful stories, the most fantastic results that people apply it. For they apply it in, the, in a simple way. They think of someone that they know and mentally carry on a conversation with another. 
I remember when, relative to the other, I remember when he was terribly disturbed because of a certain problem. And look at it now, for that would imply he's no longer disturbed. And take any problem in the world and then face it and remember when. And it's no longer that problem. So here, this man remembered when he could see across the valley one mile away, that wonderful landscape valley. And then the man next door has the urge to cut down all the bamboos. I remember when I saw Budapest. I remember when I could see the entire valley, this grand basin called Los Angeles, and see it so vividly at night when it's all lit up. I remember when, and the trees die. I remember when that cat used to tear up all the rugs in this place. It no longer tears any rug, it goes back into the backyard and uses a little mat for its purpose. And so you can take any problem in this world and treat it with this little technique I remember when. Try it. When it works, you will find Christ Jesus. And who did it? You will say within yourself, I. And who is doing it now when you say, I remember when? I am. Well, that's his name. The word I am is Jesus. The word I am is Jehovah. Jehovah is Jesus. Jesus is Jehovah. It's one. God became as I am, that I may be as he is. God became as we are, that we may be as he is. He isn't pretending that he's us. He actually became us. Until he awakens in us, let us test his power and see if we can bring things into this world that seemingly are seemingly impossible. Like 15 year habit of a cat, that's an impossible thing. And to have a habit of that nature of 15 years broken in three days without raising a finger to do it, isn't that an impossible thing? Well, with God, all things are possible. They may be impossible to man, but that man didn't do it. He sat down quietly in his mind's eye and saw the cat on the outside tearing up a mat that was placed there for the purpose to sharpen her toes or nails, but not his lovely rug. And suddenly the cat goes out and performs the act which in his mind's eye he saw. Who did it? Well, only Christ could do it, therefore he found Christ. So here this night, I hope you have found him. At least I've introduced you to him, but there's no compulsion. I can't make you accept him. So many people find it more comforting to go before a picture on a wall or some piece of little marble resembling a human form and worship it. Although we are warned all through scripture to make no graven image unto me, but none, men will still do it. I was on TV down south with this panel of five and this archaeologist came on and we had two ministers, one Baptist and one Adventist and plus this uh, archaeologist. And when I told them of my experiences, of course, it meant nothing to them because that is not the way they understand the, the great Christian mystery. That isn't so at all as far as they were concerned. Then as the hours went on, it was a two hour show. This archaeologist takes some huge big canvas and he begins to unveil it before the camera's eye. And here he is telling us that this is an actual picture, but the actual picture of Christ Jesus, that the lights coming through had actually gone upon some kind of a cloth and left the imprint. I said to him, I shouldn't have done it because that's with unkind. I said, you an archaeologist and you accept that? I said, now you two are ministers of the word, as you say. Aren't you told that unless you look like him, that's not he? But where is that? In the book of John, the first epistle of John, the third chapter, that here it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. I said to the archaeologist, do you look like him? Do you faintly resemble what you're looking at? You don't, I don't, and they don't. And yet you dare to tell this vast audience through TV that this is an actual picture of Jesus Christ? All the ministers would go along with that. They want to go along with that. They want to believe in something outside of themselves to whom they can turn. So few will accept the true Jesus. 
they haven't the courage to actually accept him and live in his name and only call upon his name and his name is I am. That's his name. So instead of calling with the name called Jesus, call, say I am. That's how you do it. And say I am this. I am making the cat. What am I doing with the cat? I am seeing the cat outside now. That's what I'm doing with the cat. And the cat takes three days, all right, so it takes three days to break a 15 year habit. And what you're doing now? I am seeing that beautiful scene across the valley. What scene? But don't you see it? Well, I'm seeing it. I am seeing a beautiful scene across the valley. But you can't if you said it to anyone else. Look at the trees blocking your view. I am seeing the scene. And they die. And then I'm seeing another scene. And the man chops them down. And no one will believe for one moment that he who is seeing it is exercising Christ. But I will tell all of them, you wait. The day will come, maybe tonight. You will taste of a fantastic power. The power that animates the whole vast wheel of recurrence and turns it on its axis. And the day will come, you'll be detached from it. And you will be among those who are turning it and watching eagerly for the word to hatch out. As the word is hatching out, the very one in whom it hatches, you detach him. Let him walk the wheel for a little while longer. And when he makes his exit, having gone through all these scenes, he is detached permanently and he will join the heavenly host. And then everyone in time is collected one by one, not in groups, all one by one.